Hi guys, in this video, this is the third video of the series today over disjoint and overlapping uh, events and all I really want to do in this video is just work out a few examples. So here we go. If you don't understand what I'm doing, you need to go back and watch the first two videos and get the concepts down before you come and look at the examples of how to actually work them and what we're doing. A card is randomly selected from a standard deck of 52 cards. What is the probability that it is a 10 or a face card? So the first thing that we want to do is we want to find out what is the probability that I roll a 10. And what I know is that one out of, well, I could say four out of the 52 cards are 10s, or I could say one out of the 13 cards in every suit is a 10. So it doesn't really matter to me what you do. I'll keep it at four out of 52 for now, but you could easily make that thing one over 13. That's the probability that I'm going to roll a 10. Now, plus, how many face cards do I have? And by face card, you need to understand that I'm talking only the jacks, the queens, and the kings. Not the aces. Aces don't have a face on them. If you've seen an ace card, you know that there's no picture of a human being on it, right? I have four jacks. I have four queens. I have four kings. So that really gives me 12 cards total, right? I have 12 out of the 52 cards in each deck are face cards. Now, is it possible, the last question is this, is it possible to have a 10 that is a face card. Is it possible to meet both requirements at the same time? And the obvious answer is no, because a 10 isn't included in a face card, right? So in other words, we could either say we're going to subtract zero, or really, for this particular problem, we know that these are disjoint events because they don't overlap at all. There's no possibility to get 10 and a face card, which means that this thing right here is going to go away. So we could leave it off, we could scratch it out, or we could just say we're going to subtract zero. However you want to think about it, whatever makes you comfortable, that's, that's what I need you to be able to do, okay, is be able to solve the problem. So now we see that I'm going to take 4 over 52 and 12 over 52. I'm going to add them together. That gives me 16 over 52. And so now I go on my calculator and I just say, well, what is 16 over 52? And I divide it, and it looks like it's this awful fraction. 30% of the time you can do this, or I'm going to turn it into a fraction. It's 4 thirteenths. Four out of every 13 cards is either a 10 or a face. Oh, duh. Of course, in each suit, in every 13 cards in one suit, there's a 10, jack, queen, and king. There's four of them. Okay. So the answer in this case would be four thirteenths. All right. Now let's take a look at this problem. A card is randomly selected from a deck of 52 cards. What's the probability that it's a face card or a spade? Now this one's going to be a little bit different because it is possible to have a face card that is a spade. And so we are going to have something to subtract there at the end. Okay. So what are the odds that I get a, a face card? So once again, we just did that one. That's 12 out of the 52 cards, jack, queens, and kings for a piece. Plus, how many cards are spades? Well, I've got 13 spades in each deck of the 52. I could easily call this one 3 out of every 13, and I could easily call this one 1 out of every 4. I'm going to leave it as 50 seconds right now because that gives me a common denominator. That's very easy to add. Right? Now we just need to worry about this. Can, is it possible for me to have a face card and a spade? And the answer is yes. You've got the jack of spades, you've got the queen of spades, and you've got the king of spades. Right, And so in each case, we have three cards that meet the requirement of being both a jack, queen, king, a face card, and a spade at the same time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 12 50 seconds. I'm going to add 13, and then I'm going to subtract 3. 13 minus 3 is just 10, so that's easy to combine those first. And those 10 plus these 12 is equal to 22, so I have 22 over 52 is my final probability. Okay. I go on my calculator, I type 22 divided by 52, uh, that's 0.423 or 42%, or if I want it as a fraction, it's 11 over 26. Okay, one more example problem here. Here we go. Out of the 200 students in the senior class, uh, let me turn on my lights real quick, they went off on me. Sorry about the pause there. I had to walk all the way around my classroom to make that happen. Out of the 200 students in the senior class, 113 students are either varsity athletes or on the honor roll. There are 74 seniors who are varsity athletes. There are 51 seniors who are on the honor roll. What is the probability that a randomly selected senior is both on the varsity athlete and on the honor roll? So in this case, I'm solving for this piece here, right? This is what I want to find. So... <clears throat> how many are either on 
varsity athletes or the honor roll. We have to go up here and do a little reading, but what I see here is there are 113 students out of the 200 that are either one or the other, right? What are the odds that a student is just one, the varsity athlete? There are 74 out of the 200 that are varsity athletes. And how many are on the honor roll? There are 51 seniors on the honor roll. The question is, what's this last piece? If you want to, um, you could say this is x out of 200. I think that that would be easiest, right? If you say this is some number out of 200 or both, then we can easily solve for x because what you'll see is that everything is divided by 200. So what I need to do then is 74 plus 51 minus some number has to add it to 113. It's almost like I can ignore the 200s, right? So let's go ahead and say it that way. 74 plus 51 minus some number is equal to how many out of 200 are both honor roll and varsity athletes. So on my calculator, I'm going to take 74 plus 51, and that gives me 125. 113 is equal to 125 minus x. Um, and so now I need to solve for x, and I can see that at 125, that's going to be 12, right? I'm going to take off 12. So x equals 12. That means that... Now remember, it's not there's a 12, is, it's not the answer, it's a probability, it's got to be a number less than 1. It means that 12 out of the 200 are both. So my answer is 12 out of the 200 would be the probability, that's my number less than 1, right? And I'm going to put that in my calculator, and when I do 12 out of 200 and turn it into a fraction, it says there's a 3 in 50 chance that that student is both on the varsity, varsity athlete and on the honor roll. So hopefully that makes sense. That's how you do um, compound, uh, and, sorry, compound, disjoint and overlapping problems. I got one video left for you. I forgot we got to do probability of the complement of an event. That'll take about two seconds to do. 